Hey guys, it's Luciano Saber with Aspiring Hollywood. We have another special guest today with us in our uh, North Hollywood studios. His name, his name is, he's making me laugh as I'm doing the intro. I'm trying to make you laugh the whole time. <laughs> We're going to do 20 takes. Nice. His, his name is Rob Troy, and uh, you guys have to stick around to see this interview, and then later to see his, uh, his set. Uh, Rob, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Luciano, am I correct? Yes, 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 yes. it is. Yes. And you don't and sing opera? I, I, I don't. Like I said before, I would clear a room if I, if I tried <laughs> to sing. So. But tell me, you're from New York. Yes, uh, I started uh, comedy in New York. Actually, I grew up in Miami Beach. Oh. And okay. then I came to New York when I was 18 to start my wonderful career. Very so nice. I have a background. So, so the, that was like, what, two years ago when you were 18? Or? Two years ago? Oh, yeah, yeah <laughs> no, no, not quite. You know, it's been a while. 93 yeah. is when I started. Oh, so. wow. Wow. Very Long time. Very nice. So what can you, what can you tell us about the world of comedy? What's, don't, what's don't, the most... Hey, kids, I'm going to tell you something right now. Look <laughs> yeah. right here. Huh? Don't do anything I did. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the most memorable moment from your, from your career? From my career? Yeah. My most memorable point of my career was, I knew I wanted to, I knew from the time I was 10, see that's actually, in all seriousness, the advice is, yeah. if you don't really have the desire to do stand-up, like if it's not, it's like, it's a compulsion, it's a need, like we have yeah. to do it. Right. Like don't ever do it if you don't have to do it because there's no money at the beginning, it's, it's sad and depressing and it takes a long time to get good. So if you don't have to do it, don't do it, but I have to. It's like my therapy. It's See, like I, I'm just I'm just terrified thinking about it. You know, thinking about stand up it just terrifies me. You know, so I, yeah, so people I say that, but, but we knew from the beginning, like going on yeah. stage, where we thrive on it. Yeah, that we don't know anything else but going on stage in front of a bunch of strangers, because obviously we're not working out with our personal relationships <laughs> and family. So it's easier for us to go on stage and talk about all this nonsense in right. front of a complete bunch of strangers is very comfortable for us so again if you don't have to do it don't do it it's uh, it's it's that's how it is I mean <laughs> I, I, yeah I'm just thinking about it to get in front of a, a of a bunch of strangers that you know it's live you can't you can't cut and go back to it because you, right. you have to keep going right? right so so if you mess up what do you do if you mess up you just keep going yeah. I mean you're gonna mess up at some point and even on the yeah. biggest stage you just keep going, and as long as they know you're confident and going with it, you just keep going. So I mean, the one thing you don't do is just like, well, it's like the same thing in acting. If you're in right. the theater and you say the wrong line, Cecile, uh, you know, you call the character the wrong name, they go, oh, okay, that was weird, I'm not him, but, and you just go on. Right, right. You just, uh, everybody just doesn't stop and be like, oh, because <laughs> then the audience is like, what the hell is this? You just keep going. So, so you kind of have to laugh at yourself sometimes and, and just chuck it up. Right, yeah. exactly. You yeah. just keep going. And sometimes you could use it and makes it better. That's yeah. what's the beauty of live anything, is anything could happen, a moment, a line, that what he's doing back there. I have to comment on it now. Right, so do you interact with, with, with the audience or mostly or, or no? Um, when you host, like if you, when I started off like hosting and mm -hmm. different things like that, it's good to, you know, not put too much pressure on, have everyone relax, be comfortable, yeah, you'll talk to them. Generally, the way my act, I don't talk to people too much because I just want to tell them stuff that's on my <laughs> mind. I don't really care what they think. Right. Um, but, you know, occasionally something will happen, you have to interact. So. Now, we, we, we talked off camera, <laughs> we, we, we talked off camera uh, yeah. earlier and, and we were talking about booing, right? So, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I would find that to be terrifying as well, you know, to, to get on stage and you say something and, you know, people look at you like, you know, what's that about? And they start booing you. Have you ever experienced that? Oh, yeah, I've, I've been booed. <laughs> yeah, my friend's never been booed off. I've been booed off many a stage, oh. mostly in New York. New York audiences, they don't give Rough you an cloth. inch. I've been booed before I've even got up on stage. <laughs> they were just booing from the beginning, like, who is this guy? Right. You know, like, I'd even start. They didn't even give me a chance. They're just very uh, harsh very and critical. Harsh. You can't, you show them any kind of fear, they'll eat you alive, so. And how do you handle that? Uh, does, it you, does it affect you, personally? At the beginning, it did, because yeah. I cared. Like, when yeah. you stop caring, then that's <laughs> fine. They, once you don't give a crap, then they're like, okay, and then they'll just hear what you say. So, so, so that's the secret, guys. You know, everybody <laughs> out there is just 
don't care. You know, Not that you <laughs> don't care. You care. You want people to have a good time yeah. and laugh, but if you have that kind of hostile crowd, you just, I mean, you just go in knowing that you just want to talk about stuff that you want to talk about. You, you don't want to try to cater, like placate an audience. Like, oh, they're going to like stuff about yeah. this and just do that for them. I mean, you're doing it for you, too. So you're doing it for everything. Thank right. you. He's telling me to stretch, be longer. Oh, absolutely. No, 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 you're doing, you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I asked your friend this, this question uh, just a few minutes ago, and that is, uh, you know, I heard that you have to be depressed. You know, you <laughs> have to have pain. You have to have, you know, all these negative and, and, and troubling experiences to, uh, you know, to, to, to be a good comedian. And I heard that Jim Carrey was going through depression and, and that's yeah. why he acted out. I don't know, is that true? Do you find that to be, to be true? Let's say it helps. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, maybe you get it to a leg up on, on certain things um, yeah. because, uh, yeah, the reason I'm a comic is because I had a, such a dysfunctional family, my father. But again, it's like, it's like you either laugh at it or you just sit home and cry all day. Well, so that's it. how I used, I always used humor probably as a defense mechanism. So instead of just sitting around crying, I made, I found humor and stuff. Right. And it really isn't, no, there are certain comedians that nothing bad has happened to them ever. They had a great childhood right. and everything's great and they had a happy marriage and kids and they're really funny. Right. So it could go either way. But let, you know, because I am. You don't have to be un, depressed unlike, to be funny. But, but, but unlike the comedians, I am interested in what you have to yeah. say. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I, I do want to hear about your, your, your family life. I mean, what, 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 was, what was so dysfunctional that... that, that what was so dysfunctional? Yeah, that, that, that you use in your comedy. Uh, well, my father uh, liked, a lot, liked to do a lot of drugs. Mm -hmm. That's one of my first memories growing up, uh, was the smell of pot. Right. I mean, for the longest time. Like, I'd wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning, and that would be the haze there be like apocalypse now yeah. and he'd be smoking and I'd walk in and I'm like hey what's that smell and he'd like be it's nothing your mother's cooking <laughs> and so the longest time I thought marijuana was a cooking spice <laughs> so that's the sense that's of why my you memory use it today and you're cooking right? <laughs> no, <laughs> so uh, it was just a very uh, crazy childhood I didn't know any better I thought every father took his motorcycle and drove it into the neighbor's fence I thought that was normal <laughs> Uh, there's worse stuff, but I try to keep it light. So, yeah. you know, you talk about it, you get it out. He was, uh, he was actually a very good father in terms of, I would never trade it for anything. Yeah. I, don't, I, w I wouldn't want a father that wasn't him. I learned everything not to do, how to do everything in moderation. If I drink, I don't drink like a gallon of Jack Daniels. So right. that's good. So I learned sure. from him doing that and then how not to be in a relationship. Well, I can, I, can, I can certainly, I can identify with that because, you know, my childhood was, was pretty similar to that. You know, right, my let's father. not get this so sad. Come no, on, no, no, no. Let's, 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 I want to bring, <sighs> I want to bring Oprah. tears. I'm start crying. I want to bring tears to your eyes. <laughs> can you have a tissue, please? Yes. Um, but if you were a tree, yeah. what kind of tree would you be? Um, an, an evergreen, arbiters. an evergreen tree. <laughs> an evergreen? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but anyway, so tell, tell us again where people can find you and uh, if you have any, any uh, presence online. Uh, add me on Facebook. I'm not at 5,000 yet. Rob Troy, uh, R-O-B-T-R-O-Y. I'm the picture with the guy in front of a microphone on stage. <laughs> uh, having a huge show at uh, Hollywood Improv, November 30th. It's our last oh, big perfect. show of the year. It's Comedy Hangover. It's been going on for over a year. The biggest names in comedy. Right. Uh, we have Chris D'Elia on our show. We've had Nick Schwartzen, uh, everyone. I'm missing a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> Brian Callen from The Hangover. Every, every big star you can think of. On our next show, we got Bobby Lee. Um, oh, nice. And Aziz uh, Ansari is coming in. Mm -hmm. So it's a very exciting show, huge show. Uh, if you want tickets, we'll get you them. Yeah. And then after that, I'm uh, shooting this other show. Uh, it's for TV, and it's going to be at Flappers. December 4th, Sunday, uh, come to see that. Check the local times. I'm not sure when that's starting. Very uh, nice. So you're, so you're going to give us a little uh, sneak preview into no. your routine? Come on. You Only if you sit there. <laughs> yeah. You okay. want to sit there? Sure. Sit there sure. the whole time. All right, and so I'm not even going to stand. <laughs> Let's just go into it. We'll, we'll just start? go. Okay, so folks, just watch, okay. watch this. Uh, this is great. Go ahead. So where are you from? 
I'm going to uh, do crowd work on you. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll tell you some stories. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is, uh, I'll tell you more about what's uh, depressing, but I make funny, whatever. I was just in my last relationship. Are you married? No. No, not married. Engaged. But oh. Soon to be. She's pretty. Yeah. She's hot. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. much so. <laughs> uh, well, the last girl I was with, the relationship I was with, very jealous girl, like extremely jealous. I'd never been with that type of girl before. Like, it was constant, it was constant. Every single girl, she'd be like, do you want to do her? Do you want to do her? <laughs> and I'm like, uh. And then she was like scenario girl. She was just like, every possible situation, it was like, oh, those two girls, would you do them at the same time? Would you? I'm like, um... No, and, but it just kept getting weirder, and she'd be like, she'd be like, mm, so then, oh, really, you wouldn't do that. So if a busload of college girls broke down in front of our house and they need you to fix the car, but also like sleep with all of them at the same time, would you do that? Would you do that? And I'm like, uh, well, yes, I'd probably do that because how often does a busload of twenty college girls break down and want you to sleep with them? Right. See, I'm being clean. <laughs> oh, she used yeah. to do this? And then she'd be like, oh, why are you talking to that Asian girl? Why are you talking to Asia? You want to F her? You want to F her? You just want to F her, don't you? I'm like, no, I'm dropping off my dry cleaning. <laughs> Seriously. Very nice. Hey, can we talk about, uh, oh, I won't bring up the name. Uh, you ever been at Universal City Walk? Uh, yeah. So I there's have. actually, this is a place, yeah. Mark Fry, your previous guest, yeah. we used to perform a show there all the time. Oh, really? Got into, uh, uh, got into a lot of trouble. I got banned from that place. Why? Tell me about it. Because <laughs> of a joke that I was telling there. And it's not even, a, it's not even horrible. Well, the place that we used to perform at, uh, I can't say the name. And just on the weekend, it gets crazy. It's like a club scene. Yeah. Guys with their shirts off. It's very, uh, whatever. <laughs> very intense. A lot of drugs going on. <laughs> the bartender's got a rash. It's uh, fun times. So, uh, so anyway, I go into the uh, bathroom because I have to go. And uh, there's no room at all, so I go into the handicap stall. So on the handicap stall, I'm in there. Next to it is a, like a baby changing station, right? A baby changing station where you could change your baby there. But the most hilarious part was uh, on that, there were seven lines of Braille. Like Braille in the thing. And I don't even want to research what it like <laughs> says. What I'm hoping it says is, oh my God, you're handicapped and blind with a baby. <laughs> At this bar, that's messed up. <laughs> Go home. <laughs> it's better nice. if I could say all the names and curse with that one. Yeah, no, it's it's great. Do you it's like? Uh, I think there's uh, actually a lot of unnecessary braille. Yeah, there is on stuff like it, things like there? there. There should even be braille there. Why is there braille there? I would put braille on stuff that uh, that you wouldn't think to put it on, but it would be necessary. Like I would put braille on like handguns. <laughs> that would be so just in case just in case oh, they, just in case that oh this is not a flute don't play me you know that kind of thing and i would this is mean but i would put braille at like tourist sites like the grand canyon like nothing to see <laughs> thank you thank you for joining us on inspiring hollywood oh Appreciate thank you so much it. okay and thank you guys for watching come see us again next week for another great interview right here on aspiring hollywood until then i'm luciano saber see you next time Thank <laughs> you.